Hello everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is my take on The Greatest Year in Movies, which was 1999, and even though it's not really a rant, I think it's kind of notable because it's, um, and how it kind of ties into conspiracy stuff is I believe we have uh, our civilization jumped the shark. If you don't know what that term means, uh, please look it up. It's a Happy Days reference from when Fonzie from Happy Days jumped the shark because they ran out of ideas for, for the plot, for the storyline. So they had him actually jump a shark tank at his motorcycle uh, for no really apparent, apparent reason. And shortly after that, the, the season, or the, the series kind of wound down. But they ran out of ideas. Any any sitcom, any uh, television show, a series, after about seven or eight years, there's only so many storylines you can do, especially if you're doing it weekly. Um, when it came to movies... We've done, yeah, we've done, you know, I'm, I'm a huge movie guy, absolutely uh, a fiend when it came to movies, especially, you know, growing up, uh, once I got my driver's license, I started going to movies by myself because I wasn't going to wait for dates or friends or anything like that. If there was a movie I wanted to watch and I really believed in seeing it in the theater because it was, design a lot of movies were designed for the theater. Yeah, some of your more, you know, small time dramatic stuff that didn't have a lot of special effects or big epic sweeping, uh, you know, uh, action sequences, you could get away with it uh, on, a, on a smaller screen. But when it came to the big stuff, like, you know, Apocalypse Now and Gettysburg and big, big movies like that, you really want to see it on the big screen. So I went to a lot of movies. And <clears throat> looking back, you know, I, I realized that um, once I got past 1999 and went into, you know, went forward, yeah, from 1999 to 2003, that there was a lot of uh, good movies made, but 1999, and I'm going to give, I'm going to break it down for you, I'm going to, you know, I, I've talked about this in different shows, but I, I, I can't really understate this, or I'm sorry, I can't really overstate this enough, which is, 1999 was a, a massive year in films, it was, <clears throat> it was almost like the producers were, um, were frantic to get it out before the end of the millennia. You know, like they didn't know if 2000 showed up, you know, because we were all worried at that time that 2000 would be this uh, Y2K uh, computer bug thing. And uh, so there were so many movies that went out, and the actors went along with it. I mean, there was actors that did, and I'll, I'll, I'll rattle them off, uh, actors that did multiple movies in the same year. Uh, you know, just one on top of each other. So it was really, really great. And uh, so let's just kind of go through it real quick. So if you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along the wiki timeline. And there's a couple movies, uh, wh how wiki has it uh, is listed. It's called the 1999 in film, uh, not television, but just film. And it lists uh, the highest grossing films, of course, and then the awards, who won Academy Awards. I'm not really going to go into that too much. And then uh, 1999 wide release films, and you you know by sorted by month. And we'll we'll go down them pretty quick. It's going to take a little while to get through them, but that's because again it was so thick. Uh, and I dare anybody, and I'll state this at the end of this, I dare anybody to compare this year against any other year in the history of film. Uh, I know that 1939, <clears throat> 60 years prior, was considered the golden age in film. Because, really, really because of two movies, and they were monstrous movies, uh, The Wizard of Oz and uh, Gone with the Wind. They were both released in the same year, and they did very, very well. Uh, Gone with the Wind didn't age, in my opinion, as well as Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz became a timeless classic and made a ton of ton of money, just over year, year after year, decade after decade. Uh, but 1999 was a monstrous year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list off, you know, uh, everything, all the major releases, uh, releases of every month, and some of the actors that were involved, maybe some of the directors, and, uh, you know, let you be the judge but if you get a chance you know anyone that's that's um young enough not to really have spent much time looking at the films in 1999 go back and and watch some of these because it was uh, even the critics you know uh, up above i'm reading here it says um uh there's something they said about the the critics considered it to be you know a a, a, cha a big change in the year of movies how the movies were never the same after that uh but for me it's completely different which is it was the the pinnacle, the peak, the high water mark of uh, cinema, especially American cinema. It did not get any better for us after this, and you'll see why. Uh, once once I start, you know, once I was going through the list, you've got to keep it in context. Which is, as I'm going through the list, you'll hear more and more titles you've probably heard before, and then you got to realize it's like, look, every one of these titles came out in the same year. 
I was in the theater that year so, so much, especially, and it got, just got stronger as the months went on. Went, went, went on. Um, you would thought there would have been a lull after the summer, but no, it, there really wasn't a lull. And then once we got into December, uh, just a, you know, a big push, and it was a really it's one of the strongest end of the years I've ever seen. So anyway, enough of the hyping, hyping, hyping. Let's get right into it, okay? So uh, in January, and, and it goes alphabetical, but in the month of January. So um, a civil action with John Travolta and Robert Duvall at first sight uh, with Val Kilmer and Mira Sorvino and Kelly McGinnis. Uh, Affliction with Nick Nolte, Sissy Spacek, James Coburn, uh, Hillary and Jackie with Emily Watson, Rachel Griffins. Uh, the Thin Red Line, which was a, which was a really bold uh, World War II movie. Uh, starring a whole a whole bunch of cameos in that Jim Caviezel, Sean Penn, Nick Nolte, uh, uh, Ben Chaplin, Adrian Brody, John Travolta again. You know he he had two movies released in the same month. Uh, Gloria uh, with Sharon Stone, uh, still crazy with um, Stephen Ray, Billy Connolly, uh, a cool dry place, which was Vince Vaughn, and Monica Potter. She's all that, which ended up January uh, with Freddie Prince Jr. and Rachel Leigh Cook. And then we get into February, and we have Payback, classic crime mo movie. Uh, it's aged very, very well. If you get a chance, but, you know, definitely check. Oh, I'm sorry. January had one more. I, you have to forgive me. Because these were the major releases, and then some of the minor independent films, which ended up becoming cult classics, were released below. If you want the full list of movies, uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, and you'll, you'll be amazed at what you see. So at the end of January, you have um, Varsity Blues which was a, a great high school coming-of-age movie, sports movie. Excellent. Um, anyway, uh, February, you got Payback with Mel Gibson, Greg Henry, uh, uh, William Devane, James Coburn, Lucy Liu, Chris Christopherson, Rushmore uh, by Wes Anderson. Uh, start, you know, with Owen Wilson, he Owen Wilson was actually in on the screenplay uh, with Jason Schwartzman, his big breakout role, uh, Bill Murray. Really cool little cult classic movie. Um uh, Rushmore, simply, simply irresistible, with Sarah Michelle Gellar, Sean Patrick Flannery, uh, Patricia Clarkston, uh, Blast from the Past, one of I think three Brendan Fraser movies that year. Uh, uh, Brendan Fraser, Alicia Silverstone, Christopher Walken, Sissy Spacek, Sissy Spacek again that year. Um, Message in a Bottle with Kevin Costner, Robin Wright, Paul Newman, uh, John Savage. Uh, My Favorite Martian, Little Disney Flick, Christopher Lloyd, Jeff Daniels, uh, Daryl Hannah. You know, all these names, icons now. Jawbreaker uh, with Rose McGowan, Rebecca Gayhart. Uh, office Space, The Office Space, you know, came out in, in uh, February of, of 1999. Um, uh, written by Mike Judge from Beavis and Butthead. Uh, directed and wrote the screenplay with Ron Livingston, Gem Jennifer Aniston, um, 20 Dates uh, with Richard Cook, 200 Cigarettes with Ben Affleck, Casey Affleck, his brother, Dave Chappelle, uh, amazing, uh, Muppets from Space uh, was also in that, uh, The Breaks also in February, The Other Sister, uh, and 8mm with Nicolas Cage. Uh, and Joaquin Phoenix, you know, one of Joaquin's you know, last movies, James Scandolfini. And uh, then we get into March. <laughs> Analyze This, uh, directed by Harold Ramis, uh, with Robert De Niro, Billy Crystal, uh, Lisa Kudrow, uh, The Corrupter, uh, Chow Yun Fat, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Cruel Intentions, with Sarah Michelle Geller, again, Ryan Phillip, Weiss, Reese Weatherspoon, Selma Blair, Louise Fletcher, <sighs> amazing. Um, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, with Guy Ritchie. I'm sorry, Guy Ritchie was the director, and... Um, uh, one second. Lock, stock, and two. I had to scroll down again. Uh, Guy Ritchie. It was amazing. It, one of his early works. Um, Deep End of the Ocean, The Rage, Carry 2, Baby Geniuses, Wing Commander. Uh, this is all in March. True Crime uh, with Clint Eastwood I, and Isaiah Washington. Forces of Nature, uh, The King and I. Doug's first movie, Ed TV, was also in March. A lot of movies came out in March. Uh, directed by Ron Howard with Matthew McConaughey Je and Jenna Elfman and Woody Harrelson, Elizabeth Hurley, <sighs> Dennis Hopper, and Ellen DeGeneres, all in Ed TV. Um, the Mod Squad with Claire Danes uh, also came out in March. And, of course, the ending of March was, you know, certainly last but not least of that month, uh, was the original, the first Matrix with Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss, Hugo Weaving, and, and so on and so on. Uh, the first Matrix. That's just the end of March. 
All right. Oh, yeah, let me throw one more into March just for the heck about it. It was a little film that did, did something called 10 Things I Hate About You with Heath Ledger. <laughs> great, great movie. Um, going into April, you had uh, Cookie's Fortune, The Out of Towners, A Walk on the Moon, uh, Go, Never Been Kissed, All About My Father, Goodbye Lover, Life, Friends and Lover, Lost and Found, Pushing Tin, uh, Entrapment, and Idle Hands. Probably the weakest of the month. But then you get into May. I'm sorry, that was all the way through April. Then you get into May. You have the first mummy with Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weitz. Uh, you have Election, uh, made by MTV Films, of all things, with Matthew Broderick, Broderick and Reese, Reese Witherspoon, Chris Klein. Uh, check that one out. That's a that's a dark little film, but it was really, really good. Uh, Trippin', Endurance, A Midsummer's Night's Dream, with Kevin Klein, Michelle Pfeiffer, Rupert Everett, Stanley Tucci, Callista Flockhart. Um, uh, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, uh, with Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. Uh, and, of course, in the end of May... Because you know they used to release movies, you know, uh, earlier back then. Uh, you had the first Star Wars prequel, uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, Fam- Phantom Mem- Menace, which was the, <clears throat> my opinion, the worst of all the Star Wars movies. But it still made a ton of money. Look it up; it still made a billion dollars. Normally, I wouldn't even uh, rattle it off, but it did make a billion dollars. Um, the Love Letter. After that, The Straight Story, Notting Hill, and of course, The uh, Matrix Clone, which was really the 13th floor, was released at the end of May, May 28th. Uh, and uh, The 13th Floor was also based off of a uh, movie called World on a Wire, which was 20-something years earlier, uh, made in Germany. Check that out if you get a chance. The 13th Floor was not an original movie. It was a remake of a German film. It was done in the 70s. How do you do a computer simulation movie in the 70s? Um Instinct started off June. Uh, the second Austin Powers movie was in June with Mike Myers. Uh, the General's Daughter, uh, which, with John Travolta, Madeline Stowe, James Cromwell, Timothy Hutton. Uh, that, there's John Travolta. That's his third movie of that year. Uh, the Ideal Husband with Rupert Everett, Julianne Moore, Peter Vaughn, uh, Minnie Driver, Kate Blanchett, uh, Tarzan. Uh, another Disney flick released that year. Big Daddy. Uh, with Ad, Adam Sandler wrote the. Um, screenplay on that one uh and of course ending up june were two movies one was not very good which was the wild 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 west with will smith and kevin klein kevin brought on selma hayek and emma walsh but also the the one the only south park movie bigger longer and uncut which was nominated for an academy award for a song in, in believe it or not which was blame canada uh we're in we're early into june july we got summer of sam Directed by Spike Lee with John Luigozamo, Mira Sorvino again, Adrian Brody. Uh, that's a dark little film. The first American Pie was in uh, uh, July of that year, uh, which was uh, Jason Biggs, Chris Klein, and Thomas Ian Nicholas, and so on and so on. Uh, Arlington Road, a uh, dark little flick with Jeff Bridges and Tim Robbins, Joan Cusack, wonderful little movie. Uh, Eyes Wide Shut. With Stan, by, directed by Stanley Kubrick. He wrote the screenplay starring Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, Sidney Pollack, Jackie Sa- you know, a Great movie. That was that was uh, Stanley Kubrick's last film before he died. Uh, the first Lake Placid. You're probably saying, oh, that's you know, not much. You know what? Turned into a franchise uh, starring Bridget Fonda, Bill Pullman, Oliver Platt, Brendan Gleeson. Betty White was in that thing. Uh, the Wood, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Uh, started off July with Kirstie Alley, Ellen Barkin, Lona Williams, Kirsten Dunst, Denise Richards. That was a a dark little film, uh, but really, really good. Uh, The Haunting, uh, with Liam Neeson and Catherine Zeta-Jones and Owen Wilson and Lily Taylor and Bruce Dern. Everyone, everyone was working that year. Uh, Inspector Gadget, uh, with Matthew Broderick. Again, that was, I think, his second or third movie that year. Deep Blue Sea. you know, don't sell that one short. That's a, a cool little movie about genetic manipulation of, of sharks uh, with Thomas Jane, LL Cool J, Michael Rappaport, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, Samuel L. Jackson uh, in his little cameo role, which is uh, the, the first Blair Witch movie, the Blair Witch Project, was summer of that year. Uh, you know, the, the movie that, that drew, you know, that was uh, made for just just pennies and it was sold at the the uh, Sundance Film Festival I think for a million dollars and then made a whole ton of money after that because of just its novelty it was one of the first if not the first true found footage movies started a whole trend Iron Giant 
animated classic with Jennifer Aniston, Harry Connick Jr., Vin Diesel, uh, Runaway Bride uh, with Julia Roberts, Richard Gere, Joan Cusack, Rita Wilson. Is, and, and now we're, we're finally getting to the end of the summer, and we've got uh, Dick, we've got Mystery Men, you know, look that up when you get a chance. Hank Azaria, uh, Jan- uh, Janine Garofalo, Eddie Izzard, Ben Stiller, Greg Kinnear, William H. Macy. It goes on and on. Uh, the Sixth Sense, M. Night Shyamalan's very first, you know, uh, f- firing off into the big screen, and he won an Academy Award for it with Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment. Uh, now, he didn't really, you know, th- there's your sophomore curse for you. You know, he won an Academy Award very first year, but... Uh, it's, what do you say? I mean, it was it was an, it was probably his best work. Thomas Crown Affair was released right after that, same weekend actually. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Rene Russo, Dennis Leary, Faye Dunaway, Bowfinger, awful movie. <laughs> There's going to be a, a couple dogs. Broke Down Palace, Claire Danes again, Kate Beckinsale, Bill Pullman, uh, Detroit Rock City was after that. Mickey Blue Eyes, Teaching Mrs. Tingle, uh, with Katie Holmes, Helen Mirren, uh, Barry Watson. Uh, Universal Soldier, In Too Deep, The 13th Warrior, with Antonio Banderas. I've watched The 13th Warrior several times. Excellent little film. Uh, the Astronaut's Wife. <laughs> Talk about a fun little conspiracy movie. There, there's one for you. The Astronaut's Wife with Johnny Depp and Charlize Theron. Uh, you know, where an astronaut gets taken over by some sort of... Uh, alien force and uh, tries to become, you know, uh, tries to change the world. Uh, Dudley Do-Right. There's another Brendan Fraser movie that year with Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, The Muse with Monica Johnson, Albert Brooks, Sharon Stone. Again, Jeff Bridges, Stephen Wright, Martin Scorsese. Uh, And then we finally get into like September. Again, this is all the same year. And I know you're probably saying, Mark, you're way too excited about this year. It's like, no, you understand. If you like movies, if you're a big cinema fan, you've got to stand in awe of what happened during 1999 it was again it was like nobody knew there was it was like they were making movies like there was no tomorrow literally like they didn't know if they would have a chance to make other movies and everything seemed to be green lighted and they so many of them worked so september uh chill factor outside providence love stinks uh stigmata interesting with patricia arquette gabriel byrne jonathan price um stir of echoes blue streak um american beauty the Academy Award winner with Kevin Spacey, Annette Benning, Thora Birch, Mina so- Servini, um, West Bentley, and so on and so on. Uh, Breakfast of Champions for Love of the Game. Classic movie uh, with Kevin Costner, Kelly Preston, John C. Riley, Jenna Malone, and Brian Cox. Uh, Bicentennial Man with Robin Williams, Sam Neill. Uh, Double Jeopardy with Ashley Judd, Tommy Lee Jones, Bruce Greenwood. And this is just worth ending September. Uh, Jacob the Liar. Uh, October, uh, The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland, Mystery Alaska, The Minus Man, Three Kings with, uh, you know, a war movie with George Clooney, Mark Holberg, Ice Cube, uh, I'm sorry, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Spike Jones, uh, Random Hearts, Boys Don't Cry, easily one of Hilary Swank's best works with Hilary Swank and Chloe Sevigny, Peter Skarsgård again, great movie, Superstar, uh, uh, Saturday Night Live Studios movie uh, with Molly Shannon, Will Ferrell. Uh, Fight Club, The Fight Club, also released on October 10th of 1999 with Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, and Helena Bonham Carter. Uh, the Story of Us with Bruce Willis and Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, the Omega Code, Bats, Bringing Out the Dead, Crazy in Alabama, Best Man, Three to Tango, and we're just ending up uh, at the end of October. And then we've got into November, uh, let's throw in right off the bat for November, The Boondock Saints. Wasn't on the main list, but it's become a cult, cl- cult classic, especially as a guy film. I, I know the producers got involved because they're kind of homophobic and you really can't be homophobic in Hollywood and still release a movie, but they did. And it was a decent movie, I gotta admit. It was a, it was a great little action film and, and didn't cost much to make from what I understand. Um, uh, the Bachelor, of course, with Chris O'Donnell, Renee Zellweger, uh, the Bone Collector, Denzel Washington, Angelina Jolie, Queen Latifah, uh, The Insider with Al Pacino, Russell Crowe, uh, Pokemon, the first movie, eh. The Messenger, the the story of Joan of Arc. I went, I saw that in the theater. Uh, Mila Jovovich, John Malkovich, Faye Dunaway, Dustin Hoffman, Anywhere But Here with Susan Sarandon, Natalie Portman, Dogma 
what a what a great great movie Dogma was. Kevin's one of my you know Ken Kevin Smith's opus in my opinion, uh, with Ben Affleck, George Carlin, Matt Damon, Linda Florentino, Selma Hayek, Jason Lee, Kevin Smith, Alan Rickman, Chris Rock, um, light it up with Forrest Ritiker, Judd Nelson, uh, Liberty Heights. Uh, with Adrian Brody, Ben Foster, Orlando Jones, uh, Joe Montana, just, just amazing. Sleepy Hollow, another Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was was working constantly. I don't know how many sets he was jumping between. Johnny Depp, uh, one of Tim Burton's dark, really dark, great movies. If you ever haven't caught it, uh, Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, uh, Miranda Richardson, Michael Gambon, Casper Van Dien, and so on and so on. Christopher Walken. Uh, as the uh, the headless horseman, uh, the world is not enough. Got to throw in a James Bond there. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Sophia Marceau, Robert Carlyle, Denise Richards, uh, Judy Dench, of course. Uh, End of Days, one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's last movies, uh, with Gabriel Byrne as the Devil, Kevin Pollock, Robin Tooney. Uh, wonderful, wonderful movie. Uh, Felicia's Journey, flawless, with Robert De Niro, Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, uh, Mansfield Park. Toy Story 2, the big, big money maker, uh, made a ton of money for that series. We just could not do any do any wrong uh, for Walt Disney with Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Joan Cusack, Kelsey Grammer, Don Rickles, with, uh, John Ratzenberger. Great voices in that. The Cider House Rules with Tobey Maguire, Michael Caine, Charlize Theron again, Paul Rudd. Deuce Bigelow, male, male gigolo, the first of those with Rob Schneider, Wilson, William Forsyth, Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin was he's outstanding. I don't know what he's doing now, but I really liked his work before. Ride with the Devil, again with Tommy McGuire, Skeet Ulrich, Jewel, Jeffrey Wright, Jonathan Brandis, Jim Caviezel, Jonathan Rice Myers, um, Anna and the King with Jodie Foster and Chow Yun Fat, uh, Stuart Little with a t- a big money maker uh, with a lot of voiceovers by Michael J. Fox, Gina Davis, uh, Nathan Lane, Chaz Palm Palm Terry, Steve Zahn. It goes on and on. And on. Um, any given Sunday, uh, Oliver Stone, great look at professional football. Uh, All star cast, Oliver Stone was just cranking them out uh, with Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, Jamie Foxx, James Woods, LL Cool J, Matthew Modine, John C. McGinley, Charlton Heston, and Margaret. I mean, that that was that's just an all star cast right there. Any given Sunday, if you like football, you gotta watch that movie. Um, and we're 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 just wrapping up um, November, going into December. You got uh, Man on the Moon, uh, which is. Um, uh, Jim Carrey is one of, probably, arguably one of his best roles of all time uh, with Danny DeVito and Courtney Love and Paul Giamatti. And then, as we're, we're getting towards the end of December, you've got like all these movies come out in the same week. You've got Galaxy Quest, one of my favorite sci-fi parody movies of all time uh, by DreamWorks. That was released um, with Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman, and Tony Shalhoub, and Sam Rockwell, and Daryl Mitchell. You've got The Green Mile, uh, which which was an outstanding Stephen King book with Tim Robbins and Tom Hanks. Check out that if you haven't. You know that was a that was a fantastic movie. You've got uh, uh, Magnolia, of course, uh, with Tom Cruise, Philip Baker Hall, Philip Seymour Hoffman, William H Macy, Julianne Moore, John C Riley, and Jason Robards. The talented Miss Mr Ripley also came out that that weekend, uh, which was. Um, uh, Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jude Law, Kate Blanchett, Philip Seymour Hoffman, again. Uh, just, and, and Angela's Ashes, based on the Pulitzer winning book, uh, which starred Emily Watson, Robert Carlyle, uh, Fantasia 2000. And finally, we end the, the very end of the, um, the last weekend of 1999, The Hurricane and Fantasia 2000. But The Hurricane was with uh, Denzel Washington, and I believe he got um, nominated for a Academy Award for that. So there you have it. Uh, the movies of 1999, I know, you know, kind of a little ramble on my part, and some of you probably were thinking, oh, I don't want to get through this thing. But you got to just have some fun. Again, if you're a big movie fan, go into uh, Wikipedia, look at the films of 1999, scroll through you know, the major ones, the release dates, and then scroll through the big list at the bottom and see if there were some you missed. It was just, it's just amazing. I found, on the, I found this by accident, and that was I realized, you know, I'm, I'm a big numbers guy. So when I was looking through these, I was, you know, when I, I, I was curious, I, 
it was mostly because of the guide on television. When you're watching a movie, it'll tell you uh, the year that it was made. That was like the, that's the first thing. And I always know it's like, wow, that's 19, some of my favorite movies were in 1999. And then as I was looking through 1999, I was realizing, holy shit, there's so many movies in 1999. And then it started to hit me. It's like, wow, I was in the theater a lot that year. I, in fact, there were quite a bit of movies that I missed because they were all released on the same weekend. And uh, I, I didn't go back, but I was in the theater, I think, multiple times every month for the entire year. So, anyway, sorry this one ran a little long, guys. Um, but thank you for listening, and uh, we'll, we'll pick up with a more serious subject in the next segment. <laughs>